Hey, GP learners, and thank you for joining us today as we're getting ready to show you some really interesting software from the group here at Arden. So I've got Rob and Laura. They're going to be showing us their new platform that basically shows you how you can monitor your COVID vaccination plans and how you're getting on with it and basically seeing the results that you're getting up to. Um, but first of all, just to introduce both of our guests. So how are we doing there, Rob? Yep, very well. Thanks so much. Thanks for asking us to come on today. And it's, um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. So thank you. Awesome. And uh, we've also got Laura joining us as well from Arden's as well. How are we doing, Laura? Hi, everyone. Yeah, well, thank you. And thanks again for having us as well. No problem. As always, if you are watching this live, feel free to comment down below. Let us know what you think of the platform, whether you are an Arden's user as well. If you are, put a thumbs up. Um, and we're going to be showing you some of the work that they've been doing to help you with the vaccinations and things. If you are watching this on the replay, it'd be awesome if you can leave a comment. So I'll try and answer your questions after the fact and stuff. And feel free to share it wherever you want. But to get started, uh, Rob, you're going to tell us about this new kind of platform you've developed to try and help practices understand the whole concept of you know, COVID vaccination and that kind of stuff. Talk us through it. Yeah, well, there's obviously um, on Arden's already on System 1 on EMS Web, we've got lots of great reports to help you send out invitations for to the various JCVI cohorts using whatever um, booking mechanism you want. Um, and we've also got lots of um, great reports on Arden's System 1 EMS Web also for looking at your activity to see, right, what proportion of your own ratings have you vaccinated so far, etc. Um, what we've created on Arden's Manager is... Um, a way where you can upload your data from System 1 EMIS Web, either on a practice base, and we've also just um, added the functionality that a CCG will can send to the practices and also upload all their practice data in one go. And when it's, it's a short process to do that, but once it's on there, um, when it is, it's visualized in a nice way so that a practice or a PCN or a CCG can then see exactly how you're getting on with your vaccinating um, program, how many of your over 80s you've vaccinated, how many are more to do, and so forth. And it's quite nice because you can benchmark between practices and benchmark between PCNs and so forth. Um, the best thing probably just is just to go in and have a look at it straight away, really. So Laura's going to be doing um, a, a quick little demo of it, of what it looks like, and then we can take questions afterwards. So over to no you, Laura. Problem. All right, well, let's go straight to the screen share then. So this is the back end, I believe, Laura. Uh, so this is the view which a practice gets um, at present. So here in the top right, right hand side, I'm logged in as John Smith from Demo Practice 3. Arden's manager is entirely cloud based platform. So you'll see here I'm using Google Chrome to access it and the URL is just simply app.ardensmanager.com. You've got various different icons here in the top left hand side. I've gone into the services icon, which is the hand with the plus above it. And you'll see basically on the left hand side, you've got various different areas which I can go into. So we've got different dashboards which cover all these different areas. But just for this example, we're going to be looking at the vaccinations and we're coming into COVID-19. When I hit this page, you'll see um, we've got the task box here in the right hand side. You'll see a task here for a practice whether that's System 1 or EMIS Web, or indeed, as Rob said earlier, if you're a CCG, we can also upload in bulk via this similar task. What we have to do is just hit the Upload button, and here you'll be provided with a list of instructions of how to locate the reports within your clinical system. So for a System 1, we're just going to the corresponding folder within clinical reporting, and EMIS is a very similar process. How to run those reports, export them into a CSV, and then simply we just copy and paste those reports into the box below. So that basically looks like this. And it populates that box there with all the reports. Next, what we do is we hit import to demo practice one, and that just uploads all the patient count numbers into the system. So just to note here that no patient identifiable data has been uploaded into Arden's Manager, it's just simply the counts. Once the data is uploaded into Arden's Manager, you'll see here we've got a little data set selector. And what we can do on Arden's Manager, we can set up different data sharing agreements with not only your PCN, or if you've got kind of a customized PCN just for the COVID vaccination, then we can also set up a custom smaller group. But also we've got a CCG data sharing agreement for this group, uh, for this organization as well. So just looking at demo practice three, for example, here, You've got the total eligible cohort of patients. So we've got just over 7,000 patients who are eligible for the COVID vaccination. 
He then got a nice gauge to indicate the status of these patients. So we've got about 95% who haven't been given. And then we've got a small percentage, 4.3, who um, have had their first dose only given. But obviously, as time progresses, you'll start to see other bars start to appear with the second dose. And also, we've got a bar to indicate the number of declined and percentage of declined patients too. Coming down to the overview section here, we've got um, just some overview all data. So, for example, we've got first dose given is the first report here. If I hover over this report, you'll see um, in the black box above, this is basically the report name within your clinical system. So if you ever want to go back to System 1 or EMIS Web to locate that report, find those patients, then that's um, the name of the report that you need to be locating. We've got a bar there to indicate your uh, number of patients who have had that first dose given, a spark line so that you can track and monitor those uploads as time goes on. And then you've got the total number of patients. So in this instance, it's 312 patients. Got a further breakdown into uh, first dose given, declined number of invitations, the practices sent. And then we've got uh, a breakdown of all the cohort groups that um, we've got here as well. So for example, we've got your residential care home patients, 80 plus, all the way down to your 50 to 54 year olds. And the way these report works is a bit like uh, top trumps. So if you've got an 85 year old patient, for example, who's living in a care home, they're not gonna appear in cohort 2A, they're gonna only appear in that first cohort. So you're not gonna get that duplication. Scrolling down to um, the performance indicators, we've again, uh, what the performance indicators do is basically they import the numerator and the denominator report, which provides you with a percentage. So you're easily able to look at how well you're progressing through each of the cohorts. So looking at the first dose given all here, we've achieved 4.2% of all the patients. That's 305 out of 7,000 patients. And we've still got just under 7,000 patients remaining. Got a similar setup following down for the second dose given as well so hopefully as time goes on you'll be able to see those bars start to grow as i mentioned earlier on arden's manager you can set up a data sharing agreement so that basically means we can start to aggregate the practice level data into pcn level data so if i click in de demo pcn one to three i can hit benchmarking and this basically looks at the aggregated number of uh, patients from my PCN. And also you've then got a breakdown of each of the practices in here as well. So if I click on first dose given, I can then have a breakdown of how those numbers all add up for each of the corresponding practices, as well as a little spark line there to uh, indicate the changes over time. If you've got multiple practices uploading at multiple times, you then got uh, data for when that data was last uploaded onto Arden's manager. So if a practice potentially hasn't uploaded in a while, you can prompt them to do that so that the data is up to date as possible. This works in a similar way for your performance indicators as well. So if I click on all, you'll be able to see the different percentages across my practices within my PCM too. We can then flip this out and say, Actually, as a PCN, I want to compare my aggregated data against other PCNs in my CCG because I've got the correct data sharing agreement set up. And you can then hit, I want to benchmark against PCNs in demo CCG. And this basically looks at, compares your aggregated PCN activity against your aggregated uh, neighboring PCNs as well. And similarly, you can then click on each of the bars to compare the activity. And if you want to drill down further into your organization, you can do here as well. So that's basically the COVID dashboard. Um, quick demo of all the functionality, how you can aggregate it up at different levels and how you can use it to track, monitor and plan your vaccination clinics. Awesome, thank you for that, Laura. Um, so I guess I know I've had um, a few questions in the meantime to um, kind of understand some of the platform and things. And um, clearly those of you that are watching us live, feel free to stick your questions down below as well. Happy to ask them. And obviously if they don't come up in terms of the couple I'm going to ask now, um, definitely we will ask them to, to Rob and Laura and stuff. But I guess um, the, the first question we inevitably have with this kind of stuff is 
how accurate is the data? I mean, you know, what can practices do, I guess, to make the data more accurate and how confident can, you know, um, CCGs and that kind of stuff be in terms of, you know, the information that's coming through? Can you give us a rough idea on that? It's slightly dependent upon the data that's coming from Pinnacle into the System 1 and the EMIS web units. Um, mm -hmm. So there's always a slight lag on that um, and it differs between the different systems, but um, there's nothing we can do about that. And obviously, um, the data, if it came in today, for example, you know, if it was a vaccination program that we did today, mm. if it came in to, um, to today as well, we wouldn't be able to report it on it until tomorrow because of how the reporting works in System 1 and EMIS Web. But other than that, as soon as the data is within System 1 or EMIS Web, you can upload it and it'll be there for you. Cool. So uh, I guess from that, I get that, that that's about 24 hour, possibly 48 hour delay, depending on how um rapidly practices are a documenting in pinnacle um and then obviously there's that i think there is a 24-hour delay for pinnacle to then upload into the clinical systems which is, is to be honest not too bad is it that's yeah pretty awesome exactly. from my perspective um so that's cool um i guess the other question we always get is how much does it cost um any thoughts so on that we're, we're providing these COVID vaccination um dashboards for free so that you don't have to be subscribing to be ardens um to be able to access it so I think we'll, you'll share a link later for it. So um, anyone can basically click on the link, sign up, register it, register, we'll send you some further information and we can get you set up and you can see your um, data on the dashboard as soon as you want, really. Cool. Uh, and as Rob mentioned, so the link's just coming up now on the screen. If not, it's also down in the comments and stuff. If you do want to have a look at the kind of trial package and, and stuff, but as well as obviously get access to the, I think it includes both the reports and access to the dashboard manager as well. Is that correct? That's correct, yes, yeah. Awesome. Um, and I guess the third question that I always get for these kind of platform things and, and that kind of stuff is, is what clinical systems does it work with and we, currently, and is there any plans for increasing to other platforms in the future? At the moment, it's just System 1 and Web. Um, so there aren't any plans at the moment, I'm afraid, for other systems like Vision, um, sadly, but um, yeah. Fair enough. Um, I guess happy to still take questions from anybody watching us and stuff. And I know we've got a fair few people doing that. So feel free to stick your comments and questions down below. But I know the other thing I always like to ask people when they come and show us these kind of things is um, what's coming next, really? Um, so two things. I think, first of all, the first thing that, that we've just added as an extra feature is the ability for um, CCGs with their practice consent to upload all the data on behalf of their practices. So actually, mm -hmm. rather than you as a, a practice having to upload the data mm -hmm. yourself, the CC can do, it, can do it once a day or once a couple of times a week or once a week with the consent of the practice. And um, uh, they basically just upload it in bulk so that when the practice then logs on or the PCN, it's all there ready for them, which is um, great. We're already in discussion with a few CCGs about, about this. Mm -hmm working for System 1 and EMIS Web bulk uploads. So again, if you're a, uh, part of a CCG or a PCN um, and are interested in this, then please do get in touch with us afterwards and we can help you get this set up for you. Mm -hmm. So, that, so that, that's a new feature that we've literally just sort of released uh, and releasing this week. Um, the, the, the second thing is that what's next is really um, following the NHS England letter recently with regards to the whole priority all being on COVID, COVID vaccination programme and everything being relatively deprioritised, there's going to be a time soon in the next month, couple of month or two, when it's going to be a case of, hang on a second, you know, we've, we've got on top of all this um, COVID vaccination, how are we doing with things, really important things like the cancer screening programmes or our long-term condition care? And we don't want to leave this too long um, to the detriment of all these other conditions um, that this is potentially having a knock-on effect to. So um, I'll probably hand over again to Laura to do a quickie one-minute demo. I think what's um, simple to show is the PCN DES dashboard that we um, provided and released back in October last year. But just a couple of items on here with regards to cancer and the IF that Laura can just um, point out to you here. Yeah, absolutely. So um, earlier we are talking about areas within the hand with the plus above it which is the service icon but we've also got the contracts icon here and we're basically as Rob said supporting numerous national contracts um, one being the PCN DES um, for this year so here I'm in the overview area and you'll be able to see all the listed reports that we've got basically supporting PCNs um, with the PCN DES contract here I'm just looking at PCN level but similar to the services area I can 
drilled down into my practices as part of my PCN here too. So for example, looking at these reports, you've got cervical screening uptake, bowel screening uptake, and breast screening uptake. You've got that overall percentage across your uh, PCM. And then again, you've got an indication of the total number of patients out of the available patients in this example. So that's again, looking at PCN level activity. If I just skip straight into the IIF, again, we've got a very similar layout here. So um, this is obviously making sure that PCNs are legible for that additional funding. So if I scroll down to uh, vaccination uptake, for example, seasonal flu vaccination over 65 is given. You've got those lower and the upper thresholds for this uh, payment indicator. So the PCNs can easily see how far they are between the uh, thresholds and if they're over the thresholds indeed. So for this PCN, we've got the green dot there to indicate that they're over the threshold and um, therefore eligible for that additional payment. We've got the various other areas as well, including the ARRS, cancer, care homes, and the SMR area on here as well. So, so I, th I think that's yeah, in response to your question, that this is all here and it's available to practices now. Um, and it's probably not on their top priority list at the moment, mm -hmm. but given a few weeks to a few months, then I think this is the area that you know, people Will hopefully find really valuable at uh, making sure that the other um, health conditions and patient cohorts are uh, effectively unprioritized um, as well. I think I think to follow on from that if there is anything that people who are using Arden's Manager would find useful to have on the platform then we're very kind of receptive to expanding and going into new areas and creating new dashboards to support practices and PCNs. Cool. Um, and we've actually had some more questions about the earlier stuff that we had. So Denise has asked, I think it's kind of a combined question. So um, she asked about, um, do you have to upload the data daily? And then she's also asked a follow on. So do you have to upload the reports from system one daily, which I'm pretty sure is the same thing. But um, my understanding is, yes, if you want accurate data, is that correct? Yeah, it's sort of, it, it, it depends upon you. There's there's no point uploading it for the sake of up, uploading it if there hasn't been any activity recently, but actually, you know, Examples of when you definitely want to upload it if you've got a meeting coming up or a PCN meeting or something like that, then then that'd be very sensible to run that in the morning and have it there, have it on the dashboard. So when you're having a meeting, you can pull it up quickly and have a quick, okay, this is how we're doing. By all means, you can do it daily if you want to. Um, and there's no harm in doing that. It's it, it's whatever suits you in your practice, really. Mm. I guess from my head, uh, what I probably suggest is maybe worth doing it on a Monday morning because you probably obviously have all the people that in vaccinated over the weekends, if that's the three max vac sites uh, or other kind of PCN based sites, um, and then probably doing it once throughout the week, I would imagine, unless you've had a midweek flu clinic where you've had a really big push to get people through. You know, th this is all based on deliveries as well, isn't it? If you've not had a delivery of vaccine for a week yeah. or so, there's not much point doing it every day in that period because you'll probably only have a few amount coming through compared to when you need to know the data and stuff. But Recognise as well, if you're feeding into that CCG level oversight, they probably do want some sort of regularity to help yeah. understand that side. I think th th this week, it you know the, the data wasn't on anyone's system on Arimus web, web from the weekend on Monday. Mm. So actually, it wasn't until on Tuesday that the data was then visible on system on Arimus web. So sure. it, it may even be a Tuesday, but um, kind of play it as you want, really. Cool. Um, so thank you for that, both of you. Um, we don't have any more questions, but I'm sure we may get some in the future. So if we do in terms of um, through the YouTube or Facebook and stuff, I'll send, should be sure to send those through to you both. And then obviously we can get some further answers for our viewers from there. Um, again, if people do want to have a look at the platform and stuff, feel free to have a look um, uh, through this link. So again, this is the one you can either copy it from there or go to the YouTube channel and then you'll see the link to take you straight through it. Or obviously just go to the Arden's website. So it'll be available, I would imagine, somewhere on the website for you to have a look at. And as always, each of you is here to so have you and your patient's time by taking hands in your primary care and learning. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. See you Thanks. Bye.